The story of the Tejas fighter jet is not just about an aircraft, it's actually a story about a nation's ambition, a story about self-reliance. Back in the 1970s and early 1980s, India found itself heavily dependent on foreign countries for its military hardware. The Indian Air Force operated jets sourced from the Soviet Union, France, the United Kingdom. While capable, this reliance created a significant strategic vulnerability, sanctions, political pressures, the high cost of imports could at any moment cripple India's defense preparedness. The need for a homegrown solution was a matter of national security. This dependence became painfully clear during geopolitical crises, constant need for spare parts, upgrades, technical support from foreign suppliers. India's hands were often tied, political strings attached to purchases worried planners and policymakers. The IAF's aging MiG-21 fleet, the decades-long workhorse, was nearing the end of its life. A replacement was urgently needed. The government realized importing would perpetuate dependency, so they decided to design, develop, and manufacture a modern fighter on Indian soil. The Light Combat Aircraft Program launched in 1983. The goal was audacious, create a lightweight, multi-role, supersonic fighter to replace the MiG-21S. But it wasn't just a plane, it was building an aerospace ecosystem, India wanted to master its own destiny in the skies. The design and development of the Tejas was a monumental undertaking, managed primarily by the Aeronautical Development Agency, or ADA, with Hindustan Aeronautics Limited as the principal partner. The core design philosophy was to create a small lightweight and highly agile fighter. The engineers opted for a tailless compound delta wing design. This configuration is inherently unstable which paradoxically makes the aircraft extremely maneuverable. To control this instability a sophisticated quadruplex digital fly-by-wire flight control system was developed from scratch. This was a huge technological leap for India, since very few countries possess the expertise to create such a complex system. The journey from the drawing board to the first flight was a long and meticulous process. Thousands of engineers, scientists and technicians across various defense research laboratories and public sector undertakings were involved. The design was refined through countless hours of wind tunnel testing and computer simulations. A key focus was on reducing the aircraft's weight and radar cross-section, which led to the extensive use of advanced composite materials. These composites make up about 45% of the aircraft's airframe by weight. The first technology demonstrator, TD-1, finally took to the skies on January 4, 2001. It was a landmark moment for the entire nation. The name Tejas, meaning radiance in Sanskrit, was officially bestowed in 2003 by Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee. The path to developing the Tejas was anything but smooth. It was a journey marked by significant challenges, both technical and geopolitical. The original plan involved developing an indigenous engine, the Kaveri. But the GTX-35 VS Kaveri engine project struggled to meet thrust and reliability targets. That failure forced the program to look for a foreign alternative. The American General Electric F-404 engine powered the initial Tejas variants, a pragmatic move to keep the program alive. After India's 1998 nuclear tests, another major challenge hit. The United States imposed sanctions, cutting off access to critical components and assistance. Key systems were affected, starting with the fly-by-wire flight control system. Actuators for the flight controls were blocked. The multi-mode radar was also affected. But this became a turning point. Indian scientists and engineers rose to the occasion. They set out to indigenize the sanctioned components. That effort produced a homegrown flight control system, proof of resilience and innovation. Integrating avionics and weapons was another complex puzzle. A modern fighter is truly a system of systems. Radar Electronic Warfare Suite Mission Computer Various Weapons There were countless software glitches and hardware compatibility issues. Each new weapon or sensor demanded extensive flight testing and software validation. Despite the hurdles, there were major breakthroughs. A homegrown mission computer was developed. The R-73 air-to-air -air missile was successfully integrated. The Israeli Derby air-to-air -air missile was also integrated. Laser-guided bombs were qualified. The long road of the Tejas program ultimately created a robust foundation for India's future aerospace projects. When comparing the Tejas to other fighter jets in its class, it's important to place it in the right context. The Tejas Mech-1A is a light combat aircraft. 
Its direct competitors are platforms like the Sino-Pakistani JF-17 Thunder, the South Korean FA-50 Fighting Eagle, the Swedish JS-39 Gripen. These are all single-engine, multi-role fighters designed to be cost-effective workhorses. The Tejas holds its own quite well within this group, and in some areas, it even has a distinct advantage. It's not designed to go head-to-head -head with heavier, more expensive twin-engine fighters like the Rafale or the F-15. Against the JF-17 Block III, the Tejas Mekay 1A presents a compelling case. The Tejas boasts a superior fly-by-wire system giving it exceptional agility and handling, especially in a dogfight. Its use of composite materials makes it lighter and potentially stealthier than the all-metal airframe of the JF-17. Both aircraft are expected to be equipped with active electronically scanned array radars. The Tejas integrates a more diverse suite of Western and Israeli avionics and weaponry, which are often considered more advanced and reliable. The Tejas is also designed for higher G limits, allowing it to perform more aggressive maneuvers than its Sino-Pakistani rival. The Swedish JAS-39 Gripen is often cited as a benchmark for lightweight fighters. But the Tejas proves that India can produce a fighter that is competitive with the best in its category. One of the most defining features of the Tejas is, honestly, its aerodynamic design. The tailless compound delta wing is not just for looks, it's actually the key to the aircraft's exceptional agility. This design reduces drag at supersonic speeds, which allows the Tejas to be very fast, while also providing high lift during takeoff and landing. Now, this inherent instability, which is managed by the indigenous fly-by-wire system, lets the pilot perform tight turns and rapid changes in direction that would be, well, impossible in a conventionally stable aircraft. This makes the Tejas a formidable opponent in a close-range aerial engagement, a true dogfighter at its core. Another unique aspect is the sheer extent of indigenization, especially in its electronic heart. The Tejas Meke 1A features an indigenous AESA radar named UDAM, a locally developed digital flight control computer, and an advanced electronic warfare suite. This level of self-reliance in critical mission systems is actually quite rare for a fighter program outside of the major global powers. It means India has full control over the software source codes, which allows for rapid and independent upgrades without having to seek permission from foreign suppliers. This sovereignty over its core technology is honestly a massive strategic advantage. The extensive use of composite materials also sets the Tejas apart. Approximately 45% of its airframe by weight and nearly 70% by surface area is made of carbon fiber composites. This is a higher percentage than many contemporary fighters. Finally, the Tejas is unique because it is tailor-made for Indian conditions and the specific requirements of the Indian Air Force. No weapon system is perfect, and a frank assessment of the Tejas reveals both significant strengths and notable weaknesses. Its greatest strength is undoubtedly its agility. Pilots who have flown it rave about its handling. The combination of its unstable aerodynamic design and a finely tuned fly-by-wire system makes it an incredibly nimble aircraft. In a visual range dogfight, the Tejas can outmaneuver many of its contemporaries. This is a critical advantage in modern air combat, where the ability to point your nose at the enemy first often means the difference between victory and defeat. Its small size and composite-heavy construction also give it a lower radar signature compared to older fighters. Another major strength, particularly for the upcoming MK-1A variant, is its advanced avionics package. The integration of an indigenous AESA radar, a modern electronic warfare suite, and a network-centric warfare capability puts it on par with the latest generation of 4.5 fighters. This allows the Tejas to detect and track multiple targets at longer ranges, employ advanced beyond-visual-range missiles like the Astra, and operate effectively in a dense electronic threat environment. However, the Tejas is not without its weaknesses. One of the most frequently cited drawbacks of the current MK-1 variant is its relatively limited range and weapon payload. As a light fighter it simply cannot carry as much fuel or as many weapons as heavier aircraft. Another challenge has been the production rate. The long-term success of the Tejas program depends not just on the aircraft's capability, but also on HAL's ability to build it in the numbers required by the Indian Air Force, and to do so on schedule. The true measure of a fighter jet is how it performs in the hands of a pilot. Feedback from the men and women who fly the Tejas has been overwhelmingly positive, particularly regarding its handling and cockpit interface. Pilots transitioning from older platforms like the MiG-21 are immediately struck by the sophistication and ease of use of the Tejas. 
the hands-on throttle and stick controls combined with the clean, uncluttered glass cockpit significantly reduce pilot workload. This lets them focus less on flying and more on the tactical situation, managing sensors, identifying threats, employing weapons. One recurring theme in pilot testimonials is the sheer joy of flying the Tejas. They call it a pilot's aircraft. Beyond its role with the Indian Air Force, the Tejas program has an even more ambitious goal, to operate from the decks of India's aircraft carriers. Developing a carrier-borne fighter is an order of magnitude more complex than a land-based version. The aircraft must withstand the brutal forces of a catapult launch and an arrested landing. That means a significantly strengthened undercarriage and a reinforced airframe to absorb shock and an arrestor hook. The Naval LCA program was launched to tackle this challenge aiming to create a carrier-capable Tejas. A shore-based test facility was built in Goa with a ski jump for takeoffs and a resting gear for landings to simulate carrier operations. On January 11, 2020, the Naval Tejas prototype NP-2 performed its first-ever arrested landing on INS Vikramaditya. The feat put India in an elite club of carrier-capable fighter designers, so while Tejas may not become the primary naval fighter, it has paved the way for India's future carrier aviation ambitions. The Tejas is more than just a fighter jet, it is a powerful symbol of India's journey towards Atmanir Bharta or self-reliance in defense. For decades India was one of the world's largest arms importers. The Tejas program represents a decisive shift away from that dependency. It has proven that India has the scientific knowledge, the engineering skill and the industrial base to produce a world-class combat aircraft. The program has created an entire ecosystem, fostering expertise in aerodynamics, material science, avionics and software development. This human capital is the program's most enduring legacy, a foundation upon which more ambitious projects will be built. The future of the Tejas platform looks bright and expansive. The Indian Air Force has already placed orders for 123 Tejas aircraft, including the advanced MK-1A variant. There is a clear roadmap for further evolution. The next major step is the Tejas Mach 2, or medium-weight fighter. This will be a larger, more powerful aircraft with a greater payload, longer range, and even more advanced systems. It will be powered by the more powerful General Electric F-14 engine, positioning it to replace other aging fighters in the Indian Air Force's fleet, like the Jaguar Mirage 2000, in the coming decades. The export potential of the Tejas is also beginning to be realized. Several countries in Southeast Asia, Africa, Latin America, have expressed interest in this cost-effective, high-performance fighter. For many nations, the Tejas offers a compelling alternative to more expensive Western jets or politically sensitive Russian and Chinese aircraft. A successful export order would be a massive boost for Indian defense manufacturing, bringing in revenue and establishing India as a serious player in the global arms market. The recent display of the Tejas at various international air shows has generated significant buzz and positive reviews. Ultimately, the story of the Tejas is a story of national will. It is a testament to the idea that with persistence, even the most daunting technological challenges can be overcome. The radiance of the Tejas is not just in its name, it is in the future it has illuminated for India's defense and aerospace industry.